Um, and again, aspirin increases pancreatic cancer among women. Now, why would that be? You see this long fish-like structure? That's the pancreas. So if you look at this structure, this curved structure here is called the duodenum. Now that is the end of the stomach. Connected to that's the stomach. They just removed the stomach so you could see everything behind it. So you've got three structures that are draining right into the duodenum. First you got the stomach, then you got the bile duct for the, the liver, and you got the pancreas. So all of these structures drain into the same area. So anything that you're taking into your body can negatively affect it or positively affect it. Here, incre significant increased risk of pancreatic cancer among women, including severe GI tract bleeding and ulcers. And this is an aspirin. Have you heard the crazy stuff? Take an aspirin a day for a healthy heart? Are there healthier alternatives that don't cause pancreatic cancer and GI tract bleeding? I hope so. Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. Now, this is, this is an interesting quote. We're free to choose our actions. We're not free to choose our consequences. And again, the Food and Drug Administration, I don't think they're doing a good job. If you've seen Super Size Me, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, rent it. It's a guy that goes in there. He's frustrated because he feels that the court systems were, were just abused because two heavyset um, teenagers went in and sued McDonald's for not having safe food. And the courts threw out the case and says, no, you know, McDonald's is producing the safe food. You haven't proved that it's, it's unsafe. So he thinks he does an experiment on himself where he eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's. And he goes in and he gets three physicals. At each of the physicals, they check his blood pressure and his vital signs. At two of the doctors, now here is a 185-pound vegetarian, 6-foot-2-inch, great shape guy. At the three doctors, he has high blood pressure at two of them. Okay, so well, we talked about blood pressure that week, so we know that that's a ridiculous test. But he goes in there and he asked, what is going to happen to me if I eat McDonald's breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And they said, pretty much nothing. It's just food. You're going to be fine. Within two weeks, he had kidney damage. Within four weeks, he had liver and kidney damage. It took him eight months to get his systems normalized. Now, this means that he's taking in toxins. This little kid is not functioning correctly. He's taking in poisons. His body doesn't know what to do with this, so it's actually storing it in his tissue. Now, since we're taking in a lot of different materials inside of our mouths, there's actually a structure attached to the bottom of the stomach that actually heals the intestine. Now, I told you that antibiotics cause leaky gut. That means that the intestinal tract is actually going to get holes poked in it. In fact, if you take something that's sharp or dangerous that can actually pierce the intestine, you have an automatic, um, like a robot in your gut that migrates over, surrounds that area of intestine that's, that's damaged, and heals it. Did you know that? Is that freaking amazing? I've dissected over 500 cadavers. I taught human dissection for eight years. We'd open these people up and you'd see this omentum wrapped, cushioning, covering, and it's loaded with rich, saturated fats and blood vessels, and it actually heals human tissue. When it's done healing the tissue, it goes back to rest automatically. Is that an intelligent system? Yep. Absolutely. God, it's cool. Now this. Um, you get 90% of your body's water absorption in the colon. So how many people have a beautiful functioning GI tract where they take in food and they go to the restroom right afterwards? Or how many people are constipated? What do you think I hear seeing as many people as we see in this office? Do you think constipation is, is common? Yes. Yep. How many people are drinking enough water in this room? Just raise your hand. Okay, good. About a quarter. Okay, 90% of the body's water absorption takes place in the colon. I'm sorry, 90% of your body's entire water absorption takes place in the colon. And that's where all the small intestine drains into. Now this colon, if you're not getting enough fluid, it's going to hold on to that and squeeze as much water out of it as you can. And you're going to become constipated. Now, you have 70 trillion cells in your body. You have four times that many bacteria, and most of them live in the colon. These bacteria keep you alive. They protect you. They produce certain vitamins. So now, if you have 
a tremendous amount of bacteria that, that you're designed to have that are keeping you alive, that protect you from disease, that actually protect you from cancer, might you want some lymph tissue close by to make sure that the bacteria are getting checked? Yeah. Would you? I got an idea. That's a good idea. Since the small intestine drains here, and since this is an intelligent design system, let's put an appendix right next to it. And let's make that full of lymph tissue so it's part of our immune system. You realize I've had some doctors say, well, the appendix was back when we had tails? Right. Okay, we never had tails. There's no design for a tail in the structure. And the appendix is lymph tissue. It's designed for the immune system. If you've had your appendix ripped out, you have a 60% increased risk of colon cancer. Okay, it's not a vestigial organ. This is vital. Every organ that you have has a purpose. Okay, if you've had your appendix taken out, it means that you have to be more cautious of what you're eating and increase more fresh fibers, more organic, and to make sure that you have healthy, healthy bacteria in the colon. Does that make sense? And also, again, anything you put in here, in order to get to the liver, which is the enzyme factory, has to go through veins. So this is the um, bag of M&Ms, the bag of Cheetos, or the fresh, healthy raw broccoli. So this is huge. Now, you are what you eat. This system is constantly being rebuilt, constantly being renewed. Your stomach lining is replaced every five to 10 minutes. Your colon, you can go in there, and this is what they do when, with, um, where they actually cut a section of the colon out. They'll sew the two ends together. 24 hours later, you can go in with a colonoscopy, you can't see the joint. The mucous membranes repair themselves that quickly. So if you have GI tract problems, chronic ulcers, chronic, you know, any of those, they're easily solved. And in fact, who here has ever heard of a stomach ulcer? Okay. <clears throat> now I'm gonna take you on a real bizarre journey. Now, first, they used to think that stomach ulcers were from spicy food. Okay, now I'm talking way, way back when in the 70s. Okay, now I was born in the 60s, so that doesn't seem that far back to me. Okay, so way back when in the 70s, they'd say no spicy foods and drink milk. You know the research they did behind that? Some guy drank a glass of milk, put it down, hey, it coats the glass. I'll bet you it'll coat the stomach. It's white, must be good. Okay, sure. Problem is, milk's protein. Okay, and if you take pasteurized milk, it's full of bad, dead bacteria that causes histamines. Okay, it'll actually increase the risk of an ulcer. So that's bad. And they didn't do any research because countries that have the highest spicy foods or the highest amount of capsaicin have the lowest amount of ulcers. So it's not spicy foods that cause it. 